Hello again, I'm Steve, and welcome back to Retro Tech. Now, on today's video, we're going to go back to look at the Panasonic 13-inch video monitor. That's this little monitor here that we tore down in a prior video, and today we're going to go ahead and take apart the other Panasonic video monitor, and then we're going to switch the tubes in that monitor and this monitor. Now, this monitor does have a tube with a little bit of screen burn in it. It's hard to get on camera. It's very faint. So you'll just have to take my word for it, but we're going to go ahead now and take a look at the other monitor. My donor monitor is a 1340G Panasonic medical color video CRT monitor manufactured in 1990. As I started to tear down this monitor, I immediately ran into a problem with these security bolts. These are called spanner bolts and they are an older type of security bolts that would keep you from getting inside things like this monitor. In order to get rid of that spanner bolt, I'm gonna need a security bolt kit, and this is the tip I'll be using. This is a spanner tip to remove spanner security bolts. So I'll just put this on the end of my multi-screwdriver and use it on these spanner bolts. Now I just need to remove this screw down here at the bottom and then I'll remove this other screw up top and then I'll keep them safe in my storage tray. And we'll get our plate out of the way. The shell should just come right off too now since we've removed all those screws. So here's a look at the tube model from our new tube and then the tube model from our other older tube and you'll notice that they just don't match completely so I'm wondering how compatible they will be. Well okay it's everybody's favorite time again and let's go ahead and discharge this monitor. I've not discharged this one yet so just like before I'm going to hook my ground cable over here on my frame sure it's nice and connected right there. Make sure my cable's out of the way. I'm just getting into that cap and discharge the tube. There we go. Now just to be safe, let's tap it a few times. While I attempted to continue to break down this monitor, it wasn't too long before I ran into another issue. I quickly realized that there was something holding it in place to the bottom, and that were a couple screws here. I just had to remove these screws. That way they wouldn't be holding the chassis in place anymore and I could get it out of the way. After the chassis has been loosened up, I still need to come back and make sure that all the wires are disconnected from everything. I've got some plastic tabs over here that are holding my anode cable in place and just have to open those up, make sure that nothing's holding any cable from the chassis. And then the whole chassis removes with ease. Okay, so now it's time to remove this odd mono speaker out of the way so I can get the tube out of this frame. To safely remove this monitor tube, I'm just gonna put it down, face down, on an older pillow, and that way I can remove the screws and not worry about scratching the screen or doing any damage to the front of the monitor. So here in the corners of this monitor, you'll see the large bolts that are holding it to the frame. There's one in each corner. All right, so after removing all four corner screws, I can just grab the yoke and slowly, safely lift the tube from its frame. And I'll get this frame out of the way and set this tube down safely back on my pillow and just take a quick look at it. It's a very clean tube. And next, we need to go ahead and start working on our yoke assembly. 
the yoke assembly, first you want to remove the convergence rings, and that's simply removing this screw ring right here out of the way first. And the convergence rings should just slip right on out of the way. Now after that, I need to also remove this screw underneath the convergence rings so I can loosen up the yoke assembly and get it out of the way. After that's all finished, it's time to get back to the original frame. Let's get this monitor out of here. I've already taken the screws out for you and we're gonna skip ahead a little bit. If you notice here, this monitor has quite a large degaussing coil around it. So that original degaussing coil on this frame is gonna stay with it. I'm gonna move it over here to the newer tube after I just wipe off some of the dust and dirt that builds up. You gotta notice all that nasty dirt and grime that builds up over time, especially on the back of these tubes. Now we're gonna remove the old degaussing coil from the bad tube and then I'm gonna put it on our new fresh tube. Now that all that work is done and we've got our tube ready, we can get our frame and prepare it for the new tube to be set inside. Okay, so it took some trial and error to get this to fit because the one thing that was different on the two tubes was the band where the bolts are put into the frame and there were these spacers on the original one. I couldn't use that with this tube. It lifted the tube too high and it wouldn't fit in here flush. So I had to use the original spacers which was just a piece of foam and then I'm using the original screws too from the other frame. Okay, next I'm going to put the yoke assembly from the original chassis here. I'm going to retrofit this now to the new tube that's been replaced on here. Just like so. After I had my yoke situated, I needed to get the convergence rings in the right spot. Now you want to try to get them lined up with this white piece of tape that's on the actual electron gun here. But I also referred to my photos from when I disassembled the monitor to make sure I had it in the right spot. All right, so now the yoke and convergence rings are set. Let's move on to rewiring our chassis. And this wiring, thankfully, is all marked with a nice indicator number and letter. And the letter is gonna tell us which board the connector goes to and the number is going to just match up with the connector. Now all we need to do is simply slide our chassis back in place. Wow, so this wiring is extremely tedious. Don't let it get you down. Just take your time. Make sure everything's correctly put into its place. And the last thing I like to do is slide this neck board back on the electron gun. Make sure that all the pins are lined up in the appropriate holes and then just give it a little push and it snugly fits back into place. There's one final round connection to make to our neck board and then we'll have all our cables in place and be ready to stick our anode cap back into our CRT tube. I'm ready to put my anode cap back and it's simply a matter of putting a little pressure on those two points, pushing it into that circular ring and then making sure it's all connecting. Let's push down this suction cup, make sure it's nice and tight so we won't have any stray electricity come out of there. All right, so here we are. This is the moment. And again, first tube swap I've tried and I have no idea what's going to happen. So. I'm going to step back, I'm going to turn the power button on, and we'll see if anything shows up. So I hear the tube on.
I don't see anything coming though. Hmm. Hello again, friends. Well, unfortunately, that tube swap did not go as planned. And what happened was the tube that I had put into this frame was not compatible with the chassis. So I had to go back then and do some more work to get these tubes working again. I've got a follow-up video where I show all that coming soon. But just know that this happens sometimes when you're doing repairs and you don't have the manual for something. Sometimes you live and learn lessons, and that's what happened to me today. Thanks again for watching Retro Tech. Special thank you again to everyone subscribing to the channel. Please let me know what you think with a comment below, and have a wonderful day.